Greetings, this is Charles McCall again with Mentoring Growing Leaders. And uh, in my daily devotions, uh, I am reading through the book of Deuteronomy. And in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, I'm just discerning, as I read, I'm just discerning leadership principles popping out all over the place. And so I'm just going to write a few of them down, share them with you. And so we're at Deuteronomy chapter 2 now. And in Deuteronomy chapter 2, I've discovered at least seven leadership principles that we should understand and we should apply as leaders in whatever sphere of leadership we're leading in. And the first one is we need to hear God's voice. You'll see Moses say over and over and over again, God said to me. It's really important to understand the difference between a good idea and a God idea. A good idea and a God idea. Because a God idea, there may be obstacles. In fact, there will be obstacles. But because you've received a word from God, it gives you strength. This is really important. Uh, when we receive a word from God, uh, it gives us passion. It gives us motivation. It gives us perseverance. Uh, we can continue pressing on when we meet with obstacles and meet with difficulties because we know that we've heard from God. But if it's only a good idea, uh, it, may, it may flourish. It may work very well, but the, the important thing is long-lasting fruit. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. You cannot do anything apart from me. You know what? We can do a whole lot apart from Jesus. We can build great churches. We can build great businesses. But the long-lasting fruit and the long-lasting reward when we stand before Jesus, that's going to be the key. That he may say, hey, great church, great ministry you've got there, great business, great organization there. I didn't tell you to do that. And so we want to receive initiation when God speaks to us. And so that just means that, that we need to be quiet. We need to find space and time to get before God to evaluate. Is this a good idea? Is this a God idea? And then be prepared to move forward with it. The second leadership principle that we find is there are times to get involved and there are times not to get involved. Now God specifically said you're going to go into the land and you're going to have to be battle ready. There's going to have to be some engagement that you're involved in. But on the other hand, there are times when you should not engage. He said for Moab and Ammon, leave them alone because I'm doing something unique through them and I don't want, it's not necessary for you to mess with it. Uh, one of the greatest pieces of advice that I've received as a leader is uh, my mentor in missionary work, uh, Eric Dooley, uh, before he left Cambodia and moved on to another country to plant a church, he said, Chuck, be careful where you draw your battle lines. Be careful where you say, this is enough, we go no further, this is not going to happen on my watch. Be careful. And that was really wise, especially living uh, a new missionary, living in a, in a new culture, and, and uh, concerned about bringing my Western American culture uh, into it. It was very, very wise, and I've tried to apply that. And so there are times when something is going on, and maybe you want to get involved. You want to start it, you want to stop it, you want to adjust it. But there are times when you just let it play out. You, that's, you've got to seek God. You've got to have wisdom and you have to seek God. When do I stop it and when do I just let it play out? I'm a believer in natural consequences. It's my parenting philosophy. It's my leadership philosophy. Is that, you know what, my, my experience in life over all of these years is that people learn best as a result of pain. And if we step in and we cut off the pain, or we try to, to do something to prevent them from experiencing the natural consequences, well, then we're really hindering what God wants to do or may want to do in their lives. And so you need to think, whatever this is, it may be a new leader, it may be a ministry, do I step in and do I adjust it? Do I stop it? Do I do whatever? Or do I just let it play out? There are times to get involved and there are times not to get involved. And that leads us to the third leadership principle that we find here is build alliances. With these that he did not get involved with, that Moses did not go to war with, God says build an alliance. Build a relationship with them so they can give you food and they can give you what you need to continue on your journey. 
It is really important for us not to try to do what we're doing alone. Build relationships with other churches, with organizations, with businesses. Build relationships with believers. However, not to be unequally yoked with them, but we can still build alliances with them to a certain level. And so build alliances. You and I are not good enough <laughs> to be able to do all that needs to be done by ourselves. Build alliances with your team. Build alliances with people who have skills and who that you don't have and have resources that you don't have. And so it's really, build, uh, really important for us to consider who can we build alliances with. The fourth leadership principle is expect that God wants you to have success. You know, God gave a command to Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply and rule and reign on earth and, and represent Him and everything they say, think, and do. God created us, mankind, to rule and reign in life, created us to have success. All throughout the Old Testament, God did not bring Israel out for them to fail. Jesus did not establish His church for us to fail. On the contrary, to have success, to have victory, to establish the kingdom of God. And so if you're following a God idea, you need to declare faith, you need to stand on faith, and you need to impart faith to those that you're in alliance with, those that you work together with, and with your leaders and your volunteers. And so expect that God is going to give you success. Leadership principle number five, not everyone will choose to move to the promised land with you. There was time when it was uh, time for Israel to cross over a certain river in this chapter, uh, and uh, they all went over at this time, but the fact is, there are times when people in your organization, in your church, even your friends, they don't want to move on with you. And if you've got a God idea, if you've got the Word of God, there are times that you have to leave them behind. Now this does not mean that we reject them. It does not mean that we scorn them. It just means that there are times and seasons, and they've walked with us for a season, but they're not walking with us through uh, the next leg of the journey. And this is really important for us. And I've, I've got a teaching I'll do sometime on video uh, that I get from Rick Warren about the, the five levels of commitment. It really helped me to understand not everybody has the same level of commitment to walk with us. And so you may come to a certain season and there may be longtime friends. They may be founders of the church with you. They may be your disciples. They may be financial partners, but they're not prepared to take the next leg of the journey with you. You need to be prepared for that. Not everybody will choose to go through the next leg of the journey with you. Leadership principle number six, there are some battles you must engage in. And so don't be afraid of the difficulty. And I said earlier, God told Moses, don't fight with these guys, but these guys you're going to have to fight with. Fighting is dirty. Fighting is nasty. Fighting is painful. Fighting is strategic. And so you will face difficulties. You will engage with demonic battles, spiritual battles. You will engage with, with uh, difficulties in relationships and difficulties in finances. These are battles, I'm just telling you ahead of time, that you need to prepare for. Uh, when I'm training leaders, I like to read through the passages in 2 Corinthians of all of Paul's, the Apostle Paul's, tribulations and difficulties. He was the day and the night in the deep. He's been without food. He's been beaten with rods. He's been chased out of the city. And to what I'm training leaders, I try to tell them ahead of time is that this is what you can probably expect. You can expect difficulty. You can expect rejection. You can expect all kinds of problems along the way. But look, we're overcomers. We expect that we're going to win. We expect that we're going to have success. But, but don't be fooled and don't be disillusioned about they're going to meet with difficulties. There are some battles that you must engage in. And so you need to prepare for that. Much more I'd like to say about that. And leadership principle number seven, understand the principle of utterly destroying. Now, when we read these verses that they killed every man, woman, and child, sometimes we might think, really? Why did you have to kill the babies? Why did you have to kill the, the women? Well, it's war. It was a different era than what we're living in now. But, but the principle is, is if, if one of those babies can grow up and get big and make it difficult for you. And that's exactly what happened to King Saul. King Saul did not want to totally, utterly destroy the Amalekites. And at the end of his life, it was an Amalekite that finally did him in. And so the principle is, number one, there are things in our life that we know these are weaknesses in my life. In the future, this might trip me up. Utterly destroy it. 
Don't let that thing live. Do whatever you need to do to kill it and bury it and get it out. And the same way for, uh, for ministries or different programs that you might have. But there's a time to start and there's a time to finish it. And, and you might not just want to cut back but you might just need to utterly destroy it and say, you know what, this is the end of that ministry. It served us well for a season, but now we've got to bury it and we've got to stop it. And so that's the, the principle uh, a little bit. Again, much, much more can be said about that, but a little bit on the principle of uh, learning to utterly destroy things that are not healthy for us, not God's plan for us any longer. It might end up tripping us up in the future. So seven leadership principles from Deuteronomy chapter two. I recommend that you check out my YouTube, Mentoring Growing Leaders YouTube. Check out my Facebook, Mentoring Growing Leaders Facebook. Uh, check out my WordPress, uh, Mentoring Growing Leaders WordPress. Charles McCall, enjoy this, but apply it. Take some time to, to think through how does this apply to your life and how does this apply to your work or your ministry. Thank you. God bless you.